it's really not fair to hear so many stories about great projects, overcoming great odds, and achieving great success in the end, and not talk about the rest. By simple statistics, for every successful project, there, there really must be many more that have failed. That's just the way that statistics work. So I'd like to ask, why don't we talk about those projects? And what about the projects that succeeded but in ways that nobody had anticipated? Um, I had the privilege to fail as uh, personally and uh, professionally on an elite team that was pushing the edges of technology. And what I'd like to bring to you is that failure is not an end, but in fact, a beginning. When I joined the MIT MicroEngine project in 1998, the goal of the project was nothing less than to create a jet engine the size of a quarter. This little engine was going to provide an alternative to batteries. We were going to bring a tenfold improvement over the, over the weight and the short life of batteries. And this project had over 40 professors and staff and students involved with a budget in the millions of dollars. And there was not one but two labs on the main campus of MIT involved. The engine itself was going to burn jet fuel. And so it would have to operate at temperatures that would melt iron and would see internal pressures of approaching 100 atmospheres. And in addition, the way that the scaling would work, taking a large engine to a small one, the, the little turbines inside would have to spin at a speed more than 100 times their large counterparts. That would mean that the tiny rotors would have to reach a speed in excess of 1 million RPM. So the engine was going to have the same uh, type of components as, as, a, as, a, as a large jet engine, but obviously the technology to build that couldn't be the same. So at the time, there was a technology uh, that was up and coming, a science uh, called MEMS, that's short for Microelectrical Mechanical Systems. And MEMS suggested that we use an existing technology uh, that was already making very small components, but for a different purpose. And that technology is the microelectronics industry. So the microelectronics industry already makes uh, and was making very tiny, the very tiny components called transistors, uh, which, are inside, uh, which are inside the computer chips that we all know. So a cell phone, for instance, might have a billion of them inside. So, uh, the thing is that if we were going to uh, leverage and map this technology from, from the uh, microelectronics industry, we were going to have to start with the same materials. We couldn't start with steel and nuts and bolts. So uh, the material that's used to build computer chips looks like this. It's a silicon wafer. And you can see <laughs> that it's thin, and it's actually quite brittle. And it's, it's the, the starting point for countless of uh, transistors and the computer chips that, uh, that, that contain them. But it's really something different to start a little engine with. So we were trying to do something that no one had ever done before with extreme challenges from our specifications that we had, that this engine required. And we were starting with the most unlikely of materials. 
So many things could go wrong, and many things did. But they changed the way that I look at life and at work. The first failure that I experienced was, was personal. And I didn't know that I was walking into a pressure cooker. My, my confidence as an engineer uh, who, who had worked on a factory floor was going to run headlong into the realities of working on a very high profile and uh, world-class project. I, I found out that, well, what happened was, honestly, the, the bottom fell out when I found out that I was going to, that I was trying to work, I was working and given factory-like deadlines, but without the factory, without the factory to support me. And um, this had taken me totally unawares, and to be honest, I really, I really became <laughs> what, 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 what could not be described any other way as th than a nervous wreck. I was having trouble doing basic duties, and the, the, the stress uh, propagated to my, to my personal life. So I was anxious all the time, and I felt that my ability as a father and as a husband was starting to falter, and I couldn't enjoy simple things like dinner with my wife or an outing with my family. And I was ashamed because I, I, uh, I could see what was happening, and I, I really didn't know how to do anything about it. My I was also failing my colleagues professionally because um, I, had lost, I, 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 had, I had lost focus. So in my previous job, I had walked a, a, a research project from its infancy into a multi-million dollar product line. And now, I could hardly move away for, from box to box because I was, I was so nervous. Now, when my colleagues had hired me, they had hoped that I would help them with wafer production, but instead they were helping me. And I hadn't expected this, and they hadn't expected it. And one day I did something I had never done before. I got into a unrestrained shouting match with my colleague on the lab floor. And I was angry and shocked because, honestly, I, I, had never, I had never used, had to resort to angry words before. It, it, that's, that's, just not, that's just not who I am. So to top it off, the microengine project was shut down before we could achieve all of the goals that we had set out to achieve. Uh, the, I, I had been working on the, pro, the, the program for seven years, seven years of my career. And in the end, we couldn't get the engine to the last cycle to, the, to uh, get it uh, to have uh, it to spin on its, on its own power, on its own power. So the funding was cut off bec before we could do what jet engineers call closing the cycle. But what if within failure lie the seeds of success? So the truth is, the truth is that I survived and I'm, I am a better person for it. I found out that I could work and contribute at the highest level with the most competitive teams and in the most demanding environments. I found out that I could learn how not to take work home, and as a result, stress went away, not just from the home, but also 
from work. And I grew as an individual as I felt great compassion from my colleagues and from my wife, who showed me the depth of love and understanding that one person can show to another. Professionally, I grew because of my failure. I learned leadership as my, my supervisor brought the colleague who I'd had the argument with together with me. And a year later, we were publishing our first paper together. I learned to communicate at the highest level so that what I had originally tried to bring into the lab, the industry experience that I had, was actually implemented not just in the project, but throughout the lab itself. And I learned, I, I, I succeeded and grew uh, as I experienced the joy of seeing students take my insights, not just into the project they were working on, but also into their careers. And I grew professionally as I was later entrusted with wafers like this one, worth $80,000 a piece. And then, and then, more importantly, the trust of my own team. And together, we built some of the most complicated microstructures that have ever been attempted. So the project itself actually was anything but a failure, as it turned out. We designed, built, and tested a trial rotor that we were able to get to spin to 1.4 million RPM without breaking. We built a generator that used a principle of electric power generation that didn't even exist before the project. And in fact, we proved that every part of the engine, every aspect of the engine, could be made so that in the future, a fully functional jet engine could be made. Now, the other successes were, were, were not foreseen, and perhaps the bigger ones. Uh, people outside of our, of our project saw what we were doing and thought, if they can almost, almost build a jet engine, then we, maybe we could apply microfabrication uh, to our projects and, and succeed, because not everyone had to make something as complex as a jet engine. So we provided the community, a community outside of ours, with 3D fabrication techniques that didn't exist before. And more importantly, we provided them with, uh, with insights. We provided them with, the, with, the idea, with ideas that they hadn't thought of before. So 3D microfabrication is now spreading throughout the world. You can, it's in labs on a chip in medicine. Biologists are manipulating cells using mini tweezers. And there's micro robots the size of insect, insects that are flying. Your smartphones, by the way, contain mechanical components that contain, that allow you to sense motion. So, in fact, there were many unseen, many unseen successes. And I'd like to conclude by sh sharing with you and showing you a original component from the microengine. It's, w when you look at a jet engine, it's the same components when you look at a big jet engine, you see the fan. These are usually 10 feet across. And I've mounted the compressor on a ring on my finger, and I'd like to show it to you. There it is. And I keep it as a reminder that, I keep it as a reminder uh, of what I went through and that I'm convinced that 
within, within failure is hidden success. And I hope, I hope that you'll think about that too. Thank you.